In this video lecture, we're going to learn about the decomposition of carbonates, nitrates and hydroxides. Now, decomposition is the process when you apply heat and the substance breaks down into smaller components. So, we're going to first discuss the decomposition of carbonates. So, when carbonates are heated, so I'm, going, I'm talking about metal carbonates over here. So, if a metal carbonate is heated, it's going to decompose and it's going to produce a metal oxide. And along with the metal oxide, it's going to produce carbon dioxide gas, CO2 gas. And this only happens when heat is applied. Some metal carbonates easily decompose while other metal carbonates need stronger heating. So I'm going to write an, write an equation as an example. So let's pick calcium carbonate, which is limestone or chalk. So if you heat calcium carbonate, it's going to decompose and it's going to produce a metal oxide, which in this case would be calcium oxide and it would release carbon dioxide gas. Let's do another example. Let's pick magnesium carbonate, which is going to decompose in exactly the same way. If you heat magnesium carbonate, it's going to decompose and it's going to produce a metal oxide, which is in this case going to be magnesium oxide, and it will also produce carbon dioxide gas. Let's do one more example. Let's pick sodium carbonate, which is uh, Na2. CO3 and if you heat this carbonate it's going to produce sodium oxide Na is plus 1 oxygen is minus 2 so the formula of sodium oxide would be Na2O plus it's going to produce carbon dioxide as well so I've given you three examples just remember that whenever a metal carbonate is heated it decomposes produces a metal oxide and gives off carbon dioxide one more thing that you need to remember about this is that reactive metals for reactive metals and you have to look at the reactive disease for that reactive metals have more stable metal carbonates carbonates which basically means that their decomposition would be much more difficult so so they require a higher temperature to decompose temperature to decompose Now we're going to discuss the decomposition of nitrates and I'm talking about metal nitrates over here. Nitrate ion is NO3-1 so any compound containing NO3-1 is a nitrate. So if you have a metal nitrate and if you heat it strongly, it would also decompose. It's going to break up into smaller components. It's going to produce a metal oxide. So a metal oxide would be produced. Nitrogen dioxide gas would be produced, NO2 gas would be produced, and oxygen gas would also be produced. So any metal nitrate, when it decomposes, it produces a metal oxide, NO2, and O2 gas. But there are a few exceptions, and the exceptions are, so you have a few exceptions. Exceptions belong to group 1 nitrates. They would decompose differently. So if you have a group 1 nitrate, it's going to decompose differently. So if you have a group 1 metal nitrate, then that would decompose and it's going to produce a metal nitrite. So it's going to produce a metal nitrite plus oxygen gas. And remember, nitrite is NO2 1 minus. So it's going to produce a compound containing NO2 1 minus ion. So uh, group 1 metal nitrates are an exception. Remember that the rest of the metal nitrates are going to decompose according to this first reaction that I've written over here. So I'm going to do a few examples now. Uh, so the first one is uh, I'm going to try and decompose calcium nitrate. So calcium nitrate, calcium is 2 plus, NO3 is 1 minus. So the formula for calcium nitrate is going to be CaNO3 twice. And since it's not a group 1 uh, nitrate, it's going to decompose according to the first reaction that I've written over here. 
So it's going to produce a metal oxide, which is going to be calcium oxide. It's going to give off NO2 gas, nitrogen dioxide, and it's going to produce oxygen gas. We need to balance this equation. So there would be two NO2s, and to balance oxygen, I would have to write half with it. Now this equation is balanced. So this is a metal nitrate that doesn't belong to group one. Let's pick another example. Uh, let's pick uh, copper nitrate. So copper nitrate would be copper is 2 plus, NO3 is minus 1. So the formula is going to be COnO3 twice. And it's going to produce copper oxide plus NO2. So it's, the equation would be exactly the same. Plus half molecules of oxygen for, for a balanced reaction. Now in the next reaction, I'm going to pick a group 1 metal nitrate. So let's pick sodium nitrate. And remember what uh, sodium nitrate, the decomposition of sodium nitrate is an exception. Uh, the exception is that group 1 nitrates decompose in a different way. When a group 1 metal nitrate decomposes, it produces a metal nitrite and it also produces oxygen gas. So, so if it's sodium nitrate, it's going to decompose and it's going to produce a nitrite. So it's going to be NaNO2 which is sodium nitrite and an oxygen molecule and to balance this equation there should be half with oxygen so this is how a group 1 uh, metal nitrate would decompose so let's do another one if I have potassium nitrate potassium nitrate is also a group 1 uh, nitrate so it's going to decompose in exactly the same way and it's going to produce potassium nitrite which is KNO2 and oxygen molecules which is going to be half O2 One last thing about metal nitrates is that reactive metals, just as in carbonates, reactive metals have more stable metal nitrates, which means that they would require a higher temperature. It would be more difficult to decompose a metal nitrate that is uh, made from a reactive metal. So, so reactive metals are going to have metal nitrates that would require a much higher temperature to decompose. It would be much more difficult to decompose a metal nitrate. So for example, you have potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate is in group 1. It's a reactive metal. Its uh, nitrate would decompose with a lot of difficulty. Copper nitrate is relatively... Uh, copper is an unreactive metal. Its nitrate would decompose uh, uh, a lot. Its decomposition would be a lot easier compared to uh, potassium nitrate. So always remember, reactive metals have more stable metal nitrates and the decomposition is more difficult. Now in this lecture, we're going to discuss the decomposition of hydroxides. Now whenever a metal hydroxide decomposes, uh, so we're talking about metal hydroxides. So whenever you heat a metal hydroxide, it's going to decompose and it's going to produce a metal oxide and a water molecule. So for example, if you if you try and heat calcium hydroxide, which is lime, and if you heat it strongly, it's going to decompose and it's going to produce calcium oxide, a metal oxide, and it's going to produce a water molecule. Similarly, if you try to heat uh, magnesium hydroxide, then it would decompose and it's going to produce magnesium oxide plus a water molecule. Let's do another example. If I try to heat sodium hydroxide, then sodium hydroxide would decompose and it would produce sodium, an oxide of sodium, which is going to be Na2O, N is plus 1, O is 2 minus, plus it's going to produce a water molecule. So you need to balance this equation. So there would be uh, there would be two NaOH. So this is the reaction of metal hydroxides decomposing. But always remember, when a, whenever you add water to an oxide, it's going to form the hydroxide back again. So, so if I if I so it's a reversible reaction. So if I add water back again, uh, then the backward reaction would also be possible. Uh, the oxide would gain water and form a hydroxide. Similarly, magnesium oxide. If you add water, it's going to form magnesium hydroxide back again. Sodium oxide. You put it in water. If it absorbs water, it's going to form sodium hydroxide back again. So, so it's a it's a very easily reversible reaction. So, heating a metal hydroxide decomposes it, ends up producing an oxide. Adding water to an oxide, then 
ends up producing the hydroxide back again.